and you've got to mimic that. Now here's the schematic. I first make these sites. If I'm just using a straight follicular unit transfer, I start with the hairline, because that's my primary zone. Then I go back and I interlock the next row. That, that, does that make sense now, the interlocking? And I continue that interlocking, and then I create these little sentinel hairs and these little irregularized hairline that really creates a natural, soft hairline. These are some of my sites. You can see how pristine they are. Really angled, perfectly straight, with a slight bend at the transition to the temporal hair. You'll see that better with an upcoming example. Another example, the, gra the sites are beautiful. You know, you've got to take pride in your work, and the sites are beautiful. That's what I love to do. It's not a sloppy, just shove it in there type of mentality. And that was, and, and I'm going to show a close-up. I don't know if you can see this, but as you get to the lateral one or two centimeters, there's a gradual shift in the hair going to the temporal zone. That is beautiful work. If you can just get that transition zone, no hair should be abruptly transitioning anywhere. There should be gradual transitions, and I'll show you more of that as we continue. When you put the grafts in, they've got to actually stay about a fraction of a millimeter above the skin because that's, as, it, as edema settles, it settles in. Otherwise, you get pitting. So my team is as important as I am. The thing that I want you to understand is that when you do a rhinoplasty, you're it. When I do a hair restoration, I'm not it. I'm 50% of the equation. My team is 50%. If the cutting is bad, if the placement is bad, the result is bad. That's important. And when you have existing hair, you can't hurt the hair. And the other thing is I see a lot of sloppy work when there's hair, people just dance around it. Well, I dance around the hair, but I still create a tight interlock grid so that even if you lose the hair, I'm still going to be able to, you're still going to be okay when you lose that hair because I've created such a wall of hair all the way back without hurting the hair. And you can see that right here. Beautiful, tightly interlocked sites with no hair damage. That requires loop magnification. Here's that close-up view of the transition. If you look, it's all forward angled, except where it begins to blend down into the transition with the temporal hair. If you can just have that slight transition, it's just a much more elegant, much more natural result that's so beautiful. Female hairlines are different, my goodness. How come I see all these results where women have the same results as men? That's because the surgeon didn't care. There is a cowlick, a spin and a curve that I recreate. And as it blends into the temporal hair and down, the way that transitions, I recreate. I really do. And, and here's a, a close-up view of my work. You can see how the, the sites actually blend back and out. That matches that cowlick, so you get a feminine result. And I'll show you results at the end. But that's important. Sensitivity to every angle of hair on every part of the scalp. Here's a, you can see that transition right into that temporal hair as it sweeps down and back. And if you go, well, I can't see that. I'll show you this. This is a, a sh closely shorn um, male, and you can see, if you don't know what hair, how hair grows, find a guy that has a closely shaved head, and look at those angles, study it, and you can see how it begins to blend in and match it. When you're doing a hair transplant, this level of care is going to take you beyond all your competitors. And you can see here how that forward angle gently sweeps down to the temple. That's a temple design. Lateral hump. The lateral hump essentially is that area that's lateral to lateral canthus. That's that upper hump. You can see this gentleman that had some hair transplants. As you start losing that hump going back, you can't just put your hairline wider. That's his comb over. You need to rebuild that hump. But when you rebuild that hump, do you just make the hair sites the same as everything else? No, there's a particular pattern of growth for the lateral hump, which you should recreate. Well, what is that design? It's this. It's a gradual cascade where the hair begins to angle down and fall like this. And you can see it there. And then you can also see that gradual part at, at the temporal angle. Here's an example of my work. You can see that gradual transition going downward. And you can see here the transition again going out, just transitioning downward and outward, which is really beautiful. What's the bridge? I, this is also known as the vertex transition point. It's the point where the horizontal scalp on the back begins a transition to the vertical. Just like what I showed you in the front, this is almost like the back hairline, if you will. And you don't want to go below that if you're not going to touch the vertex. Keep away from that. That's the upper crescent. But look at this gentleman who has alopecia, and look at the way that that vertex transition point, the hairs grow. They don't just go forward. There's a gradual sloping out. It actually matches the crown as it comes back. 
and you can see the angles go out. So we need to recreate that if we're doing the back side. Again, this is a gentleman just with natural hair, and you can see it's not just straightforward, it just arches out like this. So that vertex transition point needs to be matched. And you can see here, this is right in front of the vertex, you can see those transitions going out. That's very, very important to match that design. That the beauty of the design is what I'm in love with. Final area, crown vertex. You can see the swirl, and I create those swirls lovingly, and it has to be done that way for a natural result. This clearly is a bad job. I did not do this work. What is my work? Do you see the swirl? How it blends naturally and transitions up to the vertex transition point as it goes into the mid-scalp and beyond? That that all those transitions have to be perfect to make a great result. Another example. You can see the, the, the uh, far right is where that swirl begins and is blending perfectly with all the hairs there and blends up and blends down. Another swirl, you can see the perfect swirl as it blends up and blends down. There are no sharp transitions. That level of care is what I'm asking you to look at and understanding how hair grows to make it a challenge. Protect the other hair. Visualize a bald head and create even spacing. The cascade effect is how to maximize your grafts. If a patient combs this way, I'm going to maximize place the grafts to the left so that as he sweeps forward and to the side, I create more visual density. I maximize his number of graphs. When I'm looking at the back crown, I want to see how he parts his hair. If he's going to go to right, left to right, I'm going to create a crown. If he doesn't have a, any hair there, left to right, so it sweeps down and over and cre creates more visual density. The upper arc is more important because that provides more visual density coming down. You can see in Asian hair, it's tough to get a good result, but I get beautiful results because the angles are low and they're really <coughs> natural. You can see the hairline is natural, the angles are natural, and you can't tell seamlessly with the natural existing hair. That's a comb over on the top, and you can see as we're shedding the comb over, you can see the result. And that's as much density as I can expect in a one-time session with the multi-unit graphs here. Crown work, beautiful crown work here. Female hairline, which is a beautiful hairline that sweeps over and out with that cowlick that I've lovingly recreated. And a gentleman has had a few hair transplants without the density he wants. You can see I can truly create a lot of density in this area with the stronger types of grafts, the MUGs. No hair, really, and just really getting that density with one session. Beautiful angled hairs, we're almost done. This is a natural hairline with a pubic hair growth because of bad insertion. You've got to be careful with your insertion. You can see visual density, natural hairline, and truly a recreated hairline result. Again, you see that you can see the points of insertion from trauma from the bad team on the top. And you can see I recreated a natural hairline, and you don't see that. Plus, you have visual density. Plugs with a natural hairline coming down. No hair. This is one session. One session with the mugs to get that visual density. And one session, these are all one session, by the way. One session, one session, one session. Look at this, this is a previous work by another transplant surgeon. We're not gonna talk about the future considerations, we're out of time. Thank you for your attention.